China's DF-21D anti-ship ballistic missile really changed things. It was the first of its kind ever to become operational. Without them, you need a much slower moving cruise missiles fired from a significantly shorter range to be able to hit a moving target, like a ship. But ballistic missiles fly much faster. They were, and still are, the first true hypersonic weapons, as even some of the shorter ranged ones, like Scud, reached speeds, temporarily, at five times or more the speed of sound. They also have the benefit of coming down on the target vertically. Many radar systems cannot see directly above them, making interception much more difficult. On top of that, they can carry a much larger warhead compared to the much smaller anti-ship cruise missiles. So, having the precision necessary to hit a moving target, combined with incredible speeds, extremely long range, a difficult to defeat trajectory, and ability to deliver a massive punch with a bigger warhead can make them the perfect weapon against a highly defended modern warship. Again, it's really changing things. It can create a massive buffer zone around the western pacific where US ships are no longer safe. After all, it's not called a carrier killer for nothing. And with China now operating and building more and bigger aircraft carriers and other warships, why doesn't the US just build their own? But first, our sponsor. Raycon has been a game changer for me. Now, every time I write one of these videos, I put my earbuds in and really get into the flow. Music is an essential part of my writing style. The Raycon earbuds are co-founded by Ray J and they're a hit with other celebrities like Mike Tyson. They are the easiest earbuds to use on the planet. They fit and stay perfectly in your ears. The Bluetooth connection was easy, and every time you pull them out of the case, they automatically connect with no work from you. And it's all for half the price of other premium earbuds. With it, you get six hours of playtime, they're noise isolating, comfortable, and come in a variety of colors and sizes. And with no wires between them. And, obviously, the sound quality is just incredible. They also have a 45-day free return policy. And if you click the link down in the description box, or go to buyraycon.com slash covertcabal, you get 15% off your Raycon purchase. And finally, every purchase really goes a long way towards supporting this channel. So again, that's Raycon earbuds. Anti-ship ballistic missiles aren't actually a new concept. The Soviet Union developed their own, the R-27K, back in the 1970s. However, it never became operational. It's a very difficult technology to master. It requires so many things to be working perfectly in sync to be successful. One of the most difficult parts is just being able to find and track your target. Typical ballistic missiles target stationary targets on land. They know their location and don't have to worry about them moving. But with a ship at sea, it's a different story. The ocean is massive. Just before Pearl Harbor, the US knew that the Japanese fleet had set sail, but they couldn't find it. They searched all over, but the massive fleet was able to sail all the way across the Pacific and sneak right up to within a few hundred kilometers off the coast of Hawaii completely undetected. With the DF-21D's estimated range of 1,500 kilometers, if a ship is within that range, it could be anywhere within several million square kilometers of open water, so you need to find it first. Once you do find it, you need to continue tracking it as ships move. Even if the missile is fired as soon as the ship is detected, those ships could have traveled 30 or more kilometers away by the time the missile gets there. So you need to have some way to continue tracking your target in real time, providing updates to the missile in flight as often as possible. Recon aircraft typically carry out this task. In the Cold War, for example, Soviet recon aircraft would have been used to continually monitor US carrier strike groups, either through ELINT, by listening to the radio emissions coming from the ships, or using their own radars, or even visually. That was always really risky though, as these recon aircraft are unarmed. They can't defend themselves, and they typically fly at low speeds, so they can't even escape. Radar satellites are another option. Those, however, are typically in low Earth orbit and traveling extremely fast, so they'd be quickly out of range after flying overhead. At best, it would take another 90 minutes before circling the Earth again for another pass. And at worst, it might be several hours before its orbits line up again for another pass. And the US closely watches and monitors when satellites pass overhead. During Iran's strike on the El Assad Air Base in Iraq with ballistic missiles, they knew exactly what satellites Iran purchases its imagery from, and when they would last pass overhead to get a picture. So they waited until it had passed overhead before they actually started evacuating aircraft, equipment, and all other non-essential personnel. And sure enough, Iran got the image from the satellite and saw helicopters and juicy targets just sitting out in the open. However, by the time they actually fired, the ones aimed at those aircraft just hit empty parking lots. This tactic can be applied to ships as well. In Tom Clancy's 1986 book, Red Storm Rising, there is a part where the US fleet waits until a Soviet radar satellite passes over, and then they change direction. That way, they would be looking in the wrong place for the ships. So finding and tracking really isn't easy. 
And finally, assuming you even can track ships at sea in real time, you need a missile and a warhead that can continuously adjust its flight path along with those updated positions. Not only does it need to make adjustments in flight, but also when it enters terminal phase. This is the period right before impact where it can now use its own sensors to fine tune its trajectory to hit the target. And traveling at such high speeds and maneuvering in the atmosphere puts a tremendous amount of stress and heat on the warhead, potentially ripping it apart if not designed properly. So, anti-ship ballistic missiles are extremely, extremely difficult to build. But if China was able to accomplish all of this, why can't the US build anti-ship ballistic missiles? China reportedly finally actually tested a DF-21D against a ship at sea recently, and it was successful. So why doesn't the US just build some? The US has the technology. They have one of, if not the best, integrated networks of satellites, land and ship-based radars, along with aircraft overhead to detect and track ships at sea. And they've also had the ability to create maneuverable warheads for over 40 years now, as shown with the Pershing-2 ballistic missile. But the US, in general, hasn't focused much on anti-ship missiles at all. While the Soviet Union was building dozens of different ones, the US never really put much effort into making their own. The reason for that was that the Soviet Union never operated large naval fleets in the same way the US did. It didn't have to worry much about large carrier strike groups roaming the ocean. Plus, the US relies more on its carrier aircraft to carry out the anti-ship role. But today, with China's rapidly growing navy, complete with their own aircraft carriers, that is changing. We've already seen the US begin focusing on anti-ship missiles again. The Tomahawk cruise missile is getting an upgrade so that it can target ships at sea. And they're also developing, and now deploying, the LRASM, a brand new missile. But these both are cruise missiles, not ballistic. They travel significantly slower and with shorter ranges. One of the problems with the US building anti-ship ballistic missiles comes down to geography. Where would they put them? They would almost certainly need to put them on land, as destroyers like the Arleigh Burke cannot hold such large missiles in their VLS cells. And, at least for the time being, any potential conflict with China and their navy would take place in the western Pacific, too far away from the US mainland. Guam is a possibility, but even that is pretty far away, which would require a much larger missile to get that far. And closer allies, like South Korea and Japan, would likely be against the US basing permanently offensive ballistic missiles on their territory so it'd be difficult basing these missiles close enough to be effective. Also, up till recently, the US was restricted by the INF Treaty from operating intermediate-ranged, land-based ballistic missiles. The DF-21D, if built by either Russia or the US, would have been banned. But now that the US has pulled out of the treaty, it's no longer a problem. Another option is putting them on submarines. This was actually what the Soviet Union's plans were for the R-27K I mentioned earlier. Virginia-class subs have a different VLS system than the Los Angeles class, with what is called the VPM. These cylindrical modules can be adapted to carry one, two, or three, depending on the size, ballistic missiles instead of the seven smaller Tomahawk cruise missiles or UUVs. This could be a great option, as submarines can sneak up, undetected, anywhere, and launch. The US is currently looking at doing something like this with hypersonic missiles, so the possibility of having one that can hit a ship at sea is very possible. And finally, in a sense, the US does have an anti-ship ballistic missile with the SM-6. The SM-6 is a surface-to-air missile used to shoot down aircraft, but anything that goes up comes back down. They have already built and deployed a version of SM-6 that can hit ships. If fired on an optimum ballistic path, it could have a range of a few hundred kilometers. Its warhead, however, is tiny and would never be able to sink a ship. But you don't always have to sink the ship. Modern warships are packed with radars and other delicate equipment. Hitting them could disable vital systems of the ship, like its ability to use radar, any of its sensors, or any of its weapons. And this often is enough to knock the ship out of the battle. And the US actually is, kind of, working right now on an anti-ship ballistic missile. The new Precision Strike missile will have the ability to hit ships at sea. Its range was originally planned to be limited to 500 kilometers in compliance with the INF Treaty, but as seen in Lockheed Martin's infographic, they added that little plus sign in. These missiles are also mobile, like the DF-21D, and they're smaller in size, which, although gives them a shorter range, makes them more easy to be transported and quickly deployed anywhere, unlike the DF-21D. In the event a conflict broke out, they could be rapidly deployed to islands in the western Pacific. A few move to Okinawa could cover a vast area of the sea, from the southern tip of the Japanese mainland all the way to the northern tip of Taiwan. The weapon is still, though, in development so there's always the possibility it'll get cancelled or scaled back from its original stated plans, as so many weapon systems are. But in the meantime, China already has the ability to create massive no-go zones for US ships. 
Now that the US is no longer limited by the INF Treaty, new ideas are likely being drawn up for the future, so we will likely be seeing some new designs and interesting ideas in the near future.